G'day, it's Rusty from Rusty's Outback Adventures and in today's video we have a bit of a sad tale to tell about the Navara. Uh, we were driving back um, from picking up a load of steel the other day and I got a low oil warning light on the dash. Now I've never seen that before. Pulled over, checked the oil level, it was down. I thought, well that's a bit weird. So we put some more oil in it, thought nothing more of it. Driving a little bit further on the way home and the temperature gauge sort of goes from about quarter got to half and kept going. So as it's going up, I've pulled over on the side of the road and a bit of steam coming out. By the time we stopped, the temperature gauge had gone to the top of the, the, the scale. So when we opened the bonnet, there was all this gray, gungy, oily stuff spewing out of the radiator overflow bottle and down onto the ground. Uh, turns out, we thought we'd done a head gasket. Um, so we did the usual, rang up RAC, I have roadside assistance. They flatbed trucked it home and brought the trailer home as well. And uh, it appears that the oil cooler uh, on the side of the engine, um, I believe they, they are known to crack. So the oil actually ends up in the cooling system. So that's what's been pumped around the cooling system and it got overheated and it's spewed all that oil out. Now the engine's got 356,000 Ks on it and we have been humming and harring about whether to do the engine up now we'll wait a bit longer so really with this with this engine failure and the temp the fact that it got really hot even though we didn't drive it for very long when it was hot that we've made the decision now that the motor's going to come out and we will rebuild the engine um, so yeah so unfortunately the the nab's in the shed so i won't show you all of the the, the goings on of getting it out and putting it back in again but just go through the basic processes um, for the for the overall uh, build and I'll just this video will probably take a few weeks to actually get all the way through it so uh, yeah I hope you can stick around and um, see how we go with the engine out and putting the new engine back in and getting it back on the road again and here is what that looked like when it's spewed out of the uh, overflow the coolant overflow bottle and I'll just take the radiator cap off and show you what that looks like. I'll just take this off. Now, got all this grey, yucky looking stuff in there. And if I can poke a light in there, you can see that's all, all full of oily yuck. So, yeah, so that's the, uh, the engine as it is. But that's what will be coming out shortly. And uh, we'll start to and start pulling bonnets off and all the periphery stuff and then we'll have to get the crane in here and, and lift it up so all right stay tuned for that one well i've been at it a while now and i've got the major components out the radiators out i've got the hoses i've taken the air inlet um, i've taken the exhaust off here at the back of the turbo uh, taken the wiring harness out, taken all the drive belts off. You can see all that down there. Um, let me just put the light on. So yeah, I've taken the sorry about the glare. Taken the drive belts off. This is an automatic tensioner, which you've got to move over and then lock the pin in place to keep it in spot. Apparently, uh, learning as I go here. I've taken the air compressor off. The power steering pump is off the motor oh i've had some fun and games this whole wiring harness here this whole loom i've i've uh, gone through and labeled everything so i know where it all came from um lines are here that i've taped up uh, you just got to pull so much off to get to something else and it yeah it really is a bit of a pain uh, a few choice swear words as well just over here i'll just show you what came out of the radiator that's oily gungy sludge because we knew we got oil in the in the cooling system it's the radiator what i've done here is i've bagged and tagged everything so we know what's what um, all the bolts for all the different things are in their own little bag so we've tried to keep everything in some sort of order so yeah we're we're getting there um so it's been a bit long-winded the bell housing bolts were an absolute pain. There's always a couple that you can't reach very well. So I'm at the stage now where I'm, fingers crossed, 
I, I can put a jack under it, I can put a chain, and I can try and lift it and just make sure that everything's come off. So I've got two cables down the side, I've just got to try and get the plugs off. So, uh, all right, that's just a bit of an update. And uh, yeah, I better keep going on it. I said I've been on it a while and yeah, it's not a job I should have taken on, I think it's. Anyway, we'll push on. Well, it's been a long, hard slog, but we've actually got the motor sitting on the crane. It's, I've separated it from the gearbox. Uh, Going to have to gently lift it up now. Just be careful of this um, evap cooler here in the front. I've got one wire around the other side. I'll just show you these silly clips. I cannot get one off. Um, you can see down there. So about the like way down here, my finger is. There's a oil pressure sender and I cannot get that clip off so hopefully when I lift it up I might get a bit more clearance to be able to see it but oh yeah geez it's a bit of a hard slog um, I wasn't expecting it to be this this bad but all right we'll go ahead and lift it out now all right as you can see the engine's out Whew. I won't tell you how many days I've been working on it all right just give you a quick look inside the hole not much to see really here uh, I've got this jack under the gearbox at the moment so I'll make some sort of support for that and uh, yeah now the process begins of I'm going to go and see the engine reconditioner and have a chat with him and we'll take it from there well it's been a couple of weeks now since I took the engine down to Moyles engines in Bunbury and I've just had a call this morning to say it's ready to be picked up uh, so we're just on our way down now it's about an hour drive from here so we'll go down there and pick up the engine so it's yeah bit exciting so uh, we need to get this engine back in and uh, engine running run in because in three weeks time we're heading off on a month-long prospecting trip so that'll be another video but yeah we've got a bit of work to do so we're gonna hit the road now and go and pick up this engine well we're here at Moyles engines in Bunbury and we just come to pick up the engine and the uh, it's just coming out on a forklift now we're gonna load it in the trailer not sure I'm gonna do this one-handed but we'll see if we can video it going in the trailer. Alright, so the engine's strapped in, ready for the trip home. So, uh, let's make sure that's not going anywhere. Alright, so it looks a bit better condition than it was when it came down. So we'll uh, be on the road shortly and we'll head home and put it in. Well, as you can see now, the engine's out of the trailer. It's, it's on the uh, engine crane to support it. And I'm just about to put the flywheel uh, clutch and pressure plate back on and then we can lift it back in the engine bay. A couple of things I've had to do before we can get ready to put it in is I had to flush the, the uh, heater hoses and the heater out because it got that oil in the uh, cooling system. So we flushed all that out, we flushed the uh, coolant overflow bottle which is actually a pressure vessel as well, we cleaned all that out. So yeah. Um, just briefly about the engine before we put it in, it's a fully reconditioned engine, so it's obviously bored, new pistons, new rings, um, main bearings, big end bearings, rod bolts, main bolts, new cylinder head, because this got hot. Um, the engine came with a new oil pump, but we've also gone with a new vacuum pump as well. We put a new harmonic balancer on the front because it had some wear in it. We've also gone for a new fuel pump, We've got brand new turbocharger, we've got four new fuel, four new injectors, and yeah, pretty much a pretty much a whole new engine really. And we've also got a new radiator to go in it, a few extra hoses uh, that didn't come with the engine overhaul kit, well, the coolant hose kit, I should say. And yeah, just, just a few little odds and ends that we're, we're gonna tidy up and we put it in. So, Next job is put the flywheel and, and pressure plate on, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll look to putting it in the engine bay, hopefully this afternoon. And, yeah, like well, I said, we've got three weeks before we go away, so I need to get my finger out.
Well, as you can see by the time lapse, the motor's in. Uh, still got a fit. Oh, sorry about that light. Still got a fair bit to go yet, but at least it's in. It's bolted up to the gearbox. Um, it's sitting on one engine mount, and they do a horrible little thing down there. You probably can't see. Um, where's the torch? There you go. Engine engine mount's got to go down there. That might be a few choice words to get it in, but I'm sure it won't take a lot longer. Yeah, and then the process begins to put all the stuff back on and yeah. So anyway, I just thought I'd update you with the progress and I'll be back when we've got a bit more work done. Right, so now we're at the point where we're very close to firing the engine and I've fitted everything back on that came off and my mate Reese, who I go prospecting with, is also a mechanic and he's coming around this afternoon just to go over everything. I'll just show you what we've got to do left. All right, so I've got no water in it yet. I haven't put oil in it yet. We've still got to spin the motor over and get oil pressure. So once we put oil in it, I've, this rags just to cover the fact that there's no glow plugs and that's what you do. You leave the glow plugs out, crank it over on the motor and get oil pressure. So there's a couple little things to do and this bracket happens to be in the way of number four glow plug. So we have to leave that bracket out and yeah, a little bit, little bit of mucking around at the end. Um, new fuel filter, so we need to bleed the system. And uh, yeah, very, very close now. Battery's back in. Um, so yeah, we'll, uh, I'm fingers crossed that all goes well this afternoon and we'll, we'll get this thing running. All right, moment of truth time. There's the oil pressure light. So we're gonna just crank the motor over and hopefully we'll get oil pressure. Right, we've got oil pressure. That's awesome. That's a good start. That's a good start. All right, so we've got oil pressure. Glow plugs are in. Connected up the injectors. The fuel pump has been bled through the priming bulb on the fuel filter. So we have a water leak that we're going to get fixed tomorrow, but at the moment we're just going to crank it and see if it fires. So moment of truth. almost as good as a plasma table running for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, I'm excited. Um, yeah. It sounds very good. Alright, so as I said, we've got a little water leak that we'll fix tomorrow. No big deal. But yeah, that, that's, that's um, yeah, we're pleased that it's running. As you can hear, about to take it for a first drive. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So the running in procedure we were given says that for the first thousand k's, it says drive it normally, don't excessively idle the engine, and don't make it lug too much. So what we've been doing, we've, we've probably done about 50 or 60 k's now, what we've been doing is just getting up to a 65, 70 k's an hour in, in fifth gear and just accelerating to 100. We've done that a few times just that it slow down. So we're just basically just trying to run the motor without working it too hard, but we don't want it to um, also over rev it. So that's what we've been doing. And like I said, we've just done 50 odd k's and we'll just continue to drive it and we'll probably do another 100 or so before we go home. We have stopped once on the side of the road and had a look and you know, no leaks, no, no oil leaks or no water dripping anywhere, which is a, obviously a good sign, but we'll just continue to drive it like that. And, and we said at a thousand Ks, we'll do a first service, which is oil change and a filter change. Well, it's a week since we first fired the engine. And as you can see, the car's up on the hoist. We're just draining the oil. 
We've done 993 kilometers, I think it was. So it's close enough to its 1000 k service. So drop the oil, uh, change the filter, and just check a few things under the bonnet and up underneath. So that's what we're going to do now, and the next service will be 5000 k So, uh, so far so good. So yeah, I'm really pleased with the way it's been running uh, during its first 1000 k's that we've had it back on the road. Well, it took a bit longer than I expected when we first had the engine uh, failure but the car is now back on the road and running and as you saw just earlier we, we've done the 1000k service and we're getting ready to go away on a trip on Wednesday so it's, it was a bit long winded, um, probably a job that I, I guess I'm happy that I did it in the end, uh, it was a little bit of fiddly stuff but I guess you, you learn as you go. Um, just want to thank a few people. Um, the, the guys at Moyles Engines in Bunbury did a really good job. I was really pleased with what they did for me. Um, Bunbury Fuel Injection, where I bought the new fuel pump and injectors and, and turbo from, they um, said I needed to go back and, and they would enter the, the uh, injector codes for me, which they did free of charge. And also want to thank the members on the uh, Navara D22 and D40 owners group on Facebook. I was asking some questions on there about a few little things I wasn't sure about with the car and got some help there, so much appreciated. Um, now, I'm not sponsored by anybody I've mentioned, it's just that those are the people I use for, for the engine rebuild. And ah, I must mention my mate Reese, um, who also supervised some of the work, and including the, as you saw, the oil pressure, um, cranking to get oil pressure, and also to firing it up for the first time. So, yeah, thanks, Reese. Appreciate you being here. Um, so, if you like the video, a thumbs up would be appreciated. If there's something that you don't like on the video and you give it a thumbs down, can you just put in the comments what it is? I you know, always like to learn how to make my videos better and make better content for you. Um, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, um, subscribe button's about here. If you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comments below. And uh, yeah, look, we're, as I said, we're, we're off on a, a trip shortly. Uh, we'll be away for prospecting, so look for that in an upcoming video. Okay, so that's it for this video, and we'll see you in the next one.